Good morning, Javier Becerra, Attorney General for the great state of California. I'm joined by a number of important people that I'd like to introduce to you before we begin. Uh, we will uh, have presentations by our Senator Kathleen Galgiani, who is the supporter of the legislation we're about to discuss. I'll ask her to say some remarks after I conclude my remarks. And then we're joined by our state controller, Betty Yee, who has been active in this matter as well. And uh, the two of them will make some remarks, but I do want to make sure I introduce some of the folks who are here from the Department of Justice as well. Uh, John, you should be standing right next to Chief over here. <laughs> John, John Marsh, uh, who's coming over right now, who is the director of the Bureau of Investigations. Uh, Kevin Gardner, who is the chief of the Division of Law Enforcement and who is the, uh, the director of all of the D Division of Law Enforcement, whether it's investigations, forensic, you name it. Uh, Chief Gardner is the, is the boss when it comes to those matters within the Department of Justice. I introduced already uh, Senator Galgiani, who's with us. We have our controller, who I introduced as well. And let me introduce you uh, some of the folks who actually do the work that we're going to talk about today. Uh, Special Agent in Charge, Jim Biscalus. Jim is right over here to my far right. Uh, Special Agent Supervisor Susan Gorsuch, who is here with us. Susan right over here. And Special Agent Supervisor Sean Collins, uh, who is with me to my right. S uh, Susan does the work in Sacramento. And uh, Sean does the work that we're going to talk about in Los Angeles. And I think it's important to point that out because we have programs in place, a task force in place in Sacramento and Los Angeles doing the work of essentially seizing the stuff you see behind me. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. The, probably the most important way to start this off is by saying we're here united around a very basic and very simple principle. If you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to get ahead. That's the motto of America and certainly the motto of the sixth largest economy in the world, the state of California. Every worker who powers this economy and this engine deserves rights at the workplace. Every upstanding business owner deserves a fair market. Every taxpayer deserves to see his or her hard earned money and taxes that he or she pays used to provide vital services. That's why in our state, we have, have been leading on combating the underground economy, a massive problem estimated to account for some 60 to $140 billion annually, costing us in uncollected taxes each year some $8.5 billion. That's eight and a half billion dollars that could be used to fund children's schools. Eight and a half billion dollars that could be used to fix our roads and bridges. Eight and a half billion dollars to keep our families safe in our neighborhoods. In 2014, state agencies joined forces to address this problem. We established the Tax Recovery and Criminal Enforcement Task Force, or TRACE. Our core partners, with the Department of Justice include the Department of Tax and Fee Administration, formerly known as the Board of Equalization, the Franchise Tax Board, and the Employment Development Department for the State of California. Together, we leverage expertise that we have and the pool. then we pool together our investigative resources to do the work of bringing down the bad guys who don't want to do things by the rules. We go after those who commit felony level crimes in the underground economy throughout the state of California. We started with a task force unit in Sacramento and then we expanded to Los Angeles. In just a few short years, our teams identified $210 million in unreported gross receipts and $46 million in associated tax loss to the state of California, really to the people of the state of California. We've recovered millions of those dollars to date from lost revenues. Last June, our trace team helped us bring charges against a gentleman, Jung Kim, the owner and operator of 50 clothing retail stores throughout Southern California, including Fashion Q. Thanks to trace, the trace team's efforts and hard work, we were able to secure guilty pleas in that case and $7.6 million in restitution. 
And last December, our teams collectively and collaboratively worked together to lead to the seizure of illegal pharmaceuticals. And you see some right over here, right next to the illegal cigarettes. Uh, these, are thing, these are products that are not approved by the Food and Drug Administration. They were for sale in the Sacramento area. And we arrested the individuals in charge of that ring and the operators of that scheme. But we're just getting started. I'm pleased to sponsor SB 1272, a bill that would permanently establish the trace task force within the Department of Justice. And for that, we thank Senator Galgiani for taking the lead. The bill would give the task force support it needs to investigate these crimes and recover the tax revenue we need to keep our state strong. We would use the legislative uh, excuse me, we would use the legislation's funds to create permanent infrastructure within the Department of Justice to carry on this important work. Within this bill, we would strengthen the teams that we already have in Sacramento and Los Angeles, but more importantly, we would build new teams in San Diego, in the Bay Area, and in Fresno. This would allow the Trace Task Force to more effectively and efficiently fight underground economy crimes throughout the entire state. And now we could really say that with real fervor that we would be throughout the entire state working on tackling the underground economy. This would go a long way in helping our state fund vital programs and protect the rights of hardworking Californians, employees and business owners alike who play by the rules. I want to thank again Senator Kathleen Galgiani, Assemblymember Arambula from the Fresno area, and Senator Pro Tem uh, Tony Atkins for their leadership in the legislature for being part of this effort to move SB 1272 forward. I want to thank our controller, Betty Yee, for being part of the task force team at Trace to make it all possible to have it happen and for joining us today as well. We're looking forward to continue this collaboration on these issues that are important to everyone, all families in California. And I urge the legislators in the state capitol to help us protect all Californians. With that, let me now ask Senator Galgiani to offer some remarks. Thank you, and I want to thank the Attorney General and Controller Betty Yee for their participation with us in this. I also want to thank the agents who have been involved over the last four years for their great work in going after those who commit these crimes. And I want to thank the California Building Trades for bringing to my attention the great work that's been done with existing resources. The legislature started a pilot program about four years ago, but it's all of the agencies that have been involved, uh, the BOE, the, the Department of Tax and Fee Collection, the um, Franchise Tax Board, Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, EDD, and others who have used existing resources to bring this all about. And as the Attorney General explained, the underground economy accounts for about 140 to some even believe 200 billion in, in activity each year. And that means that the state loses out in about $8.5 billion in tax revenue that could be used for other services. And to put that into perspective, that's about the equivalent of the state's rainy day fund. And worse yet, this is a problem that continues to grow each year. From 1970 to the year 2000, the underground economy activity about doubled. So if we're not doing everything that we can to curb the activity, that loss to the state will continue to grow. I'm proud to actually author SB 1272 along with Senate Pro Tem Tony Atkins with sponsorship from the Attorney General and Betty Yee, our controller, to expand the existing program from Sacramento and LA into the Bay Area, San Diego, and to the Central Valley. It will do a great deal to curb the activity and level the playing field for the businesses that are playing by the rules. Not only does the underground act underground economy hurt our businesses, it hurts workers because those who are engaged in 
illegal activity and not reporting income taxes are also those who are cheating their workers, whether it's with regard to wage theft or not reporting um, and not paying into unemployment insurance and not paying into workers' comp. So I want to thank everybody who's here today. Again, I want to thank all of the agents for their wonderful work, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And I'd also like to introduce our controller, Betty Yee, and thank her for being here and for participating with us. Thank you, Senator. Good morning. Thank you, Senator Galgiani, for um, your sponsorship of the, uh, for your authorship of the legislation, and to the Attorney General for uh, being willing to establish the permanent home for the the Trace program. Um, you know, through fraud and tax evasion, the underground economy, as you've heard, is taking away billions of dollars from hardworking taxpayers and business owners, and uh, from the state of California. Uh, we find that fraud and tax evasion often occur in cash-driven businesses and uh, counterfeit products, and so um, I'm here in my role as the chair of the Franchise Tax Board and also um, an at-large member of the uh, uh, Board of Equalization, which uh, was really where this program first started as a pilot. And so, you know, some of the types of businesses that uh, we really gave an extra eye to um, in my role when we first established this uh, were cash-driven businesses like bars and restaurants, used car dealerships, and uh, uh, clothes, designer purchase, uh, purchases, and movies uh, are all things that are subject to being counterfeited. And uh, so so to really to combat this, um, the idea of having a multi-prong, multi-agency uh, task force was really the right approach. And uh, as you can imagine, um, as new um, uh, as new ways of, of uh, passing on counterfeit products are established, uh, we just see this problem growing and growing. Uh, you heard from the Attorney General who our partners are uh, of this uh, uh, program in the past. Um, and I just wanted to share some success stories because it'll give you a flavor of just how broad-reaching uh, the TRACE um, uh, program is. Uh, it is uh, not only looking at uh, those uh, at, the, at the construction site or those in cash-based businesses, uh, but we're looking at uh, different types of, um, of business activity as well. In 2018, you heard the, the uh, Attorney General speak about the uh, fraud scheme that w involved 50 clothing uh, stores in uh, Southern California, uh, failing to report $29 million in taxable sales to the state uh, in terms of sales tax and $39 million of taxable income to the Franchise Tax Board uh, that resulted in $7 million paid in restitution. In 2017, uh, fake tax payment checks led to the arrest and conviction of bogus home loan business operators. Uh, the Trace Task Force investigation led to the prosecution and conviction of the Santa Clarita business owner. In 2015, 10 people were arrested in San Jose, California for thousands of counterfeit CD and pirated movie videos. And the arrests and seizures were a product of an investigation conducted by Trace. In 2015, an owner of a brewery was the subject of a trace investigation, and following that investigation, sufficient evidence to arrest the business owner for multiple felonies um, ensued, which included uh, a, lot of, a, a good deal of payroll tax uh, eva evasion. And then in 2014, uh, an investigation by Trace resulted in the arrest of a Los Angeles man on five felony uh, counts of counterfeiting designer watches and sunglasses. So aside from just really protecting hardworking Californians, protecting the state coffers, uh, this program is also very important in terms of consumer protection. Um, some of the products that you see behind us, um, I will say, um, uh, to the extent that they're counterfeit, uh, bring up questions of whether they are even safe products uh, to be consumed. And so uh, consumer protection is definitely a key uh, part of this uh, focus as well. Um, again, I want to thank the Attorney General for uh, sponsoring this legislation, Senator Galgiani for authoring it. Uh, we need a permanent home and a, really a permanent program for this uh, as we see uh, more of this activity become rampant throughout the state and adding additional sites in the state and a permanent infrastructure will allow the state to be able to uh, stay on top of uh, all that is going on relative to the underground economy. But a lot of this work is because of the, uh, you know, really the minds and the hands and, and and uh, kind of the, the, the smarts of the agents that we see behind us uh, who are working in collaboration uh, with other uh, agencies, uh, but also almost have a sixth sense about you know, where there are problems. And so we uh, definitely want to continue to support the work that they do and uh, be happy to answer questions as well. Thank you. Controller Yee, thank you very much. Uh, Senator Galgiani, thank you. Thanks all very much. Thank you.